Everyone wants their phone to last longer, especially when we're out and about with no charger in sight. While smartphones keep getting better every year, battery life is still one area where many users feel let down. With the iPhone 17 expected, to launch in September 2025, a lot of attention is going to camera changes and new designs, but Apple is also making meaningful updates to how the battery performs and charges, and that might matter even more in daily use. This year, Apple is bringing out four models again, the iPhone 17, the slimmer iPhone 17 Air, the iPhone 17 Pro, and the iPhone 17 Pro Max. The Air model is new and will take over from the older Plus version. It's expected to be lighter but still packed with power. If you're hoping for giant batteries like the 6,000 mAh ones seen in some Android phones, you might be disappointed. Apple doesn't go for huge battery numbers. Instead, it works on improving how the battery works with the phone's other parts. This year, all iPhone 17 models will use stacked battery technology. This type of battery is designed to take up less space, run cooler, and last longer. That means even without increasing the size, your phone could stay alive longer throughout the day. Another smart change has to do with repairs. Apple plans to use something called electric adhesive to hold the battery in place. Unlike older glue, this new adhesive responds to a small electric current and makes the battery easier to remove. That's good news if you ever need to replace your battery. It should be quicker, safer, and less messy for repair centers. Battery life will also get a solid boost from the chips used in these phones. The regular iPhone 17 and 17 Air will run on the A19 chip, while the Pro and Pro Max will use the A19 Pro. These chips might be built using either a 3 nanometer or 2 nanometer process. Smaller chips are more efficient, which means they can do more while using less power. That helps the battery last longer without needing to be recharged as often. Besides the chip, other parts are also being upgraded to use less energy. Apple is introducing a new display technology known as M14 OLED panels. These screens will look great and consume less power. On top of that, the updated 5G modem is expected to be more efficient, which means your phone won't drain as quickly when using mobile data. Charging speed isn't getting a major upgrade, though. Apple is expected to stick with similar speeds to the iPhone 16, about 27 to 30 watt wired charging. That's fast enough to fully charge your phone in roughly an hour and a half. While other brands offer much higher numbers like 100 watt or more, Apple usually focuses more on safety and battery health over time. Wireless charging will still be supported at up to 15 watt using MagSafe. But the exciting addition this year could be reverse wireless charging. This feature would let you use your iPhone to charge smaller devices like AirPods or an Apple Watch by placing them on the back of the phone. It may only be available on the Pro and Pro Max models, and the speed might be around 7.5 watt. Not super fast, but still useful in a pinch. All iPhone 17 models will support USB-C with USB power delivery. That means you won't need a special Apple-branded charger. If you already own a good charger from brands like Anchor or Ugreen that supports 27 watt or more, you're good to go. Unlike some Android phones that need their own brand's charger for full speed, Apple keeps it simple. There's still no charger in the box, so make sure you have the right one if you're planning to upgrade. All in all, the iPhone 17 isn't about flashy battery numbers. It's about smarter performance. With better chips, improved screens, more repair-friendly batteries, and helpful new features like reverse charging, Apple is making the phone experience better in ways that matter. If you found this breakdown helpful, make sure to like the video. And subscribe to our channel for more updates on the iPhone 17 and other upcoming tech. The iPhone 17 series is shaping up to be quite an upgrade, with leaks hinting at some noticeable design changes. Recent dummy models, likely molds used for prototypes, suggest variations in thickness, camera placement, and a key feature that some speculate Apple might remove. These early glimpses give us a better idea of what to expect from Apple's next generation lineup. One of the most reassuring details from these leaks is that MagSafe will remain a part of all iPhone 17 models. There were concerns that the iPhone 17 Air, designed to be ultra thin, might ditch MagSafe due to potential interference with the C1 chip. However, these leaks suggest Apple has found a way to keep MagSafe functionality intact, even with the slimmer build. This is great news for users who rely on MagSafe charging and accessories, proving that Apple isn't ready to move away from this feature just yet. Another interesting change comes with the front-facing camera placement on the iPhone 17 Air. 
Unlike previous models, where a camera sits on the right side of the dynamic island cutout, leaks show that Apple has shifted it to the left. Meanwhile, the standard iPhone 17 and Pro models are expected to keep the camera in the usual position. While this might seem like a minor adjustment, Apple often makes subtle changes to distinguish its models, and this could be part of that strategy. When it comes to size, the leaks reveal noticeable differences. The iPhone 17 Air is expected to be the slimmest of the lineup, aligning with earlier reports that Apple is focusing on a super thin design. In contrast, the Pro models appear to be thicker than their predecessors, possibly to accommodate larger batteries or improved internal components. The standard iPhone 17, however, seems to maintain a similar thickness to current models. These size differences suggest that Apple is making trade-offs to balance portability, battery life, and performance. Another design tweak involves the rear camera module. While details remain uncertain, the leaks indicate slight differences in camera bump designs between the Air and Pro models. This aligns with previous rumors that Apple has been experimenting with the placement and layout of the rear camera setup. Changes like these often hint at upgrades in camera technology, which is something to look out for when Apple officially unveils the devices. The continued presence of MagSafe across the iPhone 17 lineup suggests that Apple sees long-term value in this technology. Over the years, MagSafe has become an essential part of the iPhone ecosystem, supporting various accessories like wireless chargers, wallets, and mounts. The fact that Apple is keeping it on even the thinnest model signals that remains a priority for future iPhones. These leaks also highlight Apple's strategy in creating different models to suit various users. The iPhone 17 Air will likely attract those who prefer a lightweight, ultra-slim design, while the Pro models might appeal to users looking for better battery life and camera performance. By offering different sizes and features, Apple ensures that there's a model to match different preferences and needs. As always, it's important to take these leaks with some caution, as things can still change before the official announcement. However, if these details hold true, we can expect a thinner Air model, a thicker Pro lineup, and MagSafe sticking around for another generation. What are your thoughts on these potential changes? Do you prefer a super thin phone or would you rather have a thicker model with better battery life? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this update useful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more tech news. Certifications suggest that the hardware is already finalized, leaving little room for last minute changes. Price could also influence how well the Galaxy S25 Edge is received. Reports suggest that the 250 gig model could be priced at around $1,000, while the 512GB version may go up to $1,100. When comparing this to the standard S25, which is expected to have a bigger battery, some users may question whether the Edge model is worth the extra cost. The Galaxy S25 Edge promises a beautiful, ultra-thin design. But the real question is whether the battery size will be a deal-breaker for potential buyers. If you prefer a lightweight phone and don't mind charging it more frequently, this could still be a great option. But for users who need long battery life, this trade-off may be harder to accept. Would you choose a slimmer phone at the cost of battery life? Or do you think Samsung should have prioritized endurance over design? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this update useful, be sure to like and subscribe for more tech news.